Hello everyone, MP Hater here, and welcome back to my newcomer's guide for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is part 16. So in the last episode, we ended up making it back to Ashina Castle, and the place is under attack right now by Shinobi. We're going to have to go upstairs to find out what's really going on. Otherwise, though, we're going to come around the corner here. I've already killed the guy that was in here in the last episode, so we're just going to give this guy a stabby stabby. Come out here, you can talk to this guy if you want to. Then we're going to climb up. So let's go ahead and talk to Owl. Apparently he survived Harada Estate. And now you get the big choice of the game. However, I'm going to try to avoid spoilers where I can. If you obey the Iron Code, you're going to be fighting two bosses back-to-back. -back, difficult bosses, mind you. And then the game will immediately end afterwards. You won't have the opportunity to go buy anything or do any upgrades or nothing. If you go for a Break the Iron Code, on the other hand, uh, it will extend the game by almost another fourth. Because we're going to be headed to the Fountainhead Palace after this. So um, that's going to end up being uh, the preferred option because we're going to end up getting more prayer beads. We're going to get another gourd seed. There's a few more abilities we're going to unlock. Um, so we also will be able to complete uh, Anayama's quest that we uh, started earlier in the game uh, with Kotaro's quest. So uh, definitely stuff that you're going to want to uh, do as part of the Break the Iron Code option. In general, because of the fact that you end the game able to go unlock other stuff before you progress into New Game Plus, I generally generally recommend Break the Iron Code option for your first playthrough. Uh, if you're doing a follow-up playthrough uh, via New Game Plus, uh, in order to get all of the items, then you're going to want to go ahead and do the Obey the Iron Code option, which will also allow you to face off against two unique bosses that you wouldn't otherwise face off against. So... I'm going to go ahead and do the Break the Iron Code option. And that is going to launch us into a fight against Why? Owl. Enough talk. So there are kind of, I guess you could say, two schools of thought uh, as far as this fight is concerned. Um, I'm going to show you kind of the ways that I do this fight. Uh, there are two ways that I generally recommend for this fight. The first way is going to be a hit and run. Um, long story short, he's got a uh, bunch of attacks where he will do a deflection against your attack and then follow up with an overhead swing. And the thing about that is that if you uh, deflect the uh, attack, um, you he basically won't be able to hit you again if you're in the proper positioning for him. So you basically uh, hit him, try to hit him twice, he'll deflect, he'll throw an attack at you, you'll deflect, and then you can go ahead and swipe at him once and then back away. Um, in addition, several of his attacks are going to leave him wide open, and I recommend the Whirlwind Slash to get in a couple of quick sl uh, slashes. In addition, because he may block, and in this case, Whirlwind Slash will do damage even when uh, the enemy is guarding. This particular uh, hit-and-run thing is going to be more of a health-based uh, um, health strategy, whereas the alternative is going to be to be very, very aggressive and I would recommend either Ichimanji or Ichimanji Double, or even the Mortal Draw would be fine. Um, I tend to prefer the Ichimanji Double or the Ichimanji for the more aggressive method. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to run the first phase as the hit and run. And then I'll run the second phase as the very aggressive run. So... I'm also going to go ahead and attack him in a couple of ways. I want him. I want you to see a couple of his attacks. So you see that? I didn't let him do it, but I backed away. Uh, that was an ability that will knock you down and they will stab you with the sword. It will do nearly all of your health and damage. So I recommend avoiding that. In addition, don't do a thrust against him. Otherwise, all of his attacks basically have a way for you to kind of counter them. 
As long as you deflect them. So try to get used to deflecting his attacks. And then when you do that, dash against him and then immediately hit him and then back away. He's doing it again, dash against him, swing. As you can see, he tries to do an overhead attack instead. And with that, he tries to do a kick to your head. The kick doesn't do any damage, so that's your opportunity to um, basically get in a hit. So when he runs, or when he does that, we're gonna go ahead and do a whirlwind slash, back away. When he does that, catch it with a deflection. When he does that, dash up to him and give him a swing. And he loves that attack, leaves him open a lot of the time. That makes it so you can't heal temporarily. So again, the kick doesn't do any damage, so as long as you swing right at the time, you'll interrupt the kick before he does anything else. Oh, I asked for that. And he's done. So back away, he's gonna basically slam himself on the ground. So some of his attacks are gonna change now. Uh, whenever he does the kick off your head now, he's going to throw poison on the ground instead of shurikens. So uh, he'll throw, throw, throw poison at you. I recommend just running through it and then nailing him with your sword. If you run right through it, he basically will be completely unprotected. You'll get probably poison, but that's okay. Uh, in addition, he does that. So we're going to go ahead and be really aggressive with him. So run after him whenever he moves away. And you want to deflect everything he's got. And if you can get him locked into this two-hit combo, you can often get a whole bunch of his posture down. If he does that, by the way, uh, use it as an opportunity to uh, do a thrust. And he's already dead. So if you can get him in a corner, even better. I usually will end up doing basically uh, swing, swing. He's gonna hit you back with the deflection. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna all be holding right as I try to slowly circle around him. So with that though, we are done with Owl. We're gonna go ahead and grab this idol. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this opportunity to get the Ichimanji double. I happen to like it for a couple of the enemy, uh, well, a couple of the mini bosses we're going to be dealing with, because we're going to have to fight Juzo the Drunkard again uh, a little bit later, and so I'm going to recommend that we have this for that. Otherwise, though, uh, let's go ahead and, oops, I almost forgot. 
Let's go ahead and enhance our attack power with the memory that we just got. And then we're going to go downstairs and talk to Kuro. And that they're idle to grab first, though. So Emma's going to be here once you uh, rest. So keep talking to him until he asks about Emma. And if you already talked to Emma about it, it'll basically progress the conversation automatically. Otherwise, you'll want to talk to Emma. So now that we've done that, we'll burn the incense. So he's going to cut himself. The wound. I'm fine. Still nice. well. Yeah. How those it's like was that the item of uh, Wolf. Yes. You must be my big So bring uh, talk to him until he says that, and then we're going to rest at the idol. His position is now going to change. Now we have the opportunity to eavesdrop on him. For almost a year he wouldn't. Mm. Go ahead and talk to him as well, and he's going to give you a rice ball. Now we're going to talk to Emma. If she's not ready to talk yet, she um, you may have to rest first. In fact, I think she'll tell uh, transport. Yeah, she does. So she'll transport or teleport, relocate up here. I must... You're going to bring up what Kuro said. Then obviously we want to uh, not have Kuro die. So she's going to look into some stuff. Uh, we're going to rest at the idol. We're going to talk to her again. Master, I fear. So she gives you Tomoe's note. There is a way the process as I the ever however and the ever so the ever if the tree the flower correct but so if is the, it was last but there are what's wrong if I was just trying what I think of some so she's planning on visiting the graves of um, which is the old grave so make sure to talk to her until she mentions the old grave Goodbye. and then we're gonna go ahead and teleport there. So what we're doing, by the way, since I don't think I mentioned it already, is we're trying to unlock some of the things that are required for getting the alternate endings, as well as we want to unlock the ability to uh, go to the alternate Harada estate. So we're going to head back to... I didn't mean the left day temple. <laughs> Oops. We want to go to the Ashina Castle old grave site. So hit travel, and then we're going to go to the old grave. Then we're going to come back to the dilapidated temple. Okay, so turn left, then we're going to head out here. Talk to her until she, until she mentions the talking to the sculptor. And now we're going to head back to the dilapidated temple. So she's in there talking to him. We're going to eavesdrop on them. So make sure you get that eavesdrop. Then you're going to come in here and talk to Emma. Tell her about the fact that you overheard. What are you telling me? Do I... So now you're going to get Father's Bell Charm. Is this a... if you should, I... Goodbye. 
So, we're going to be using this now in front of the Buddha. Now would be a good time to spend any money that you have, if you have any that to spend. Because we're about to be in basically two mini bosses. So we immediately get teleported this part of the way through the Harada estate. And you're going to notice something different. There is an enemy here. So uh, this is one of the mini bosses that you faced earlier. They were at the entrance to the sunken valley. However, this guy is a good bit stronger this time. So he's one of the ninja guys. He has that four hit combo followed by the thrust kick. So we're going to have to deal with that. In addition to his left, there is a guy who's going to be shooting arrows at us. And if we basically move away from him at all, he's going to whistle and call some dogs. And the dogs themselves are not your average mutts. Uh, they take two hits from your uh, sh shinobi uh, stuff in order to kill them. And um, so I don't recommend letting him whistle at all. We want to kill him quickly. Ideally, if we can get him into the left corner over there as we're fighting him, that'll keep us from getting attacked by the uh, guy who is uh, who is shooting arrows at us. So I'm going to come in kind of at an angle. One, two, three, four. Catch the kick. Catch that and then jump on his head. It's going to do an insane amount of posture damage. And he's good for his first death blow. You can almost immediately keep hitting him again. Oh, there he goes. And he's dead. I was not able to get him in the corner, though. I really do hate these guys. <laughs> anyway, we're going to come over here and kill this guy. And be aware that there are going to be some enemies coming. So what I recommend doing is we're going to run, 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 run. Because there are three Taro Troop guys here. And they are not playing around. Now, if you want to try to kill them, uh, they are, there are... There's one right there, one right there, and one off to the right there. I'm not even going to bother going back that way. Um, we're going to go through here, and we're going to duck. We'll come back for that item later. And the reason why we're going to do this is because there are three of the ninja enemies that are on the roof of this building. And uh, if you're not careful, you may be fighting three of them at the same time, along with these three guys. So we're going to stay underneath here. And that's going to avoid us having to kill them. You can see one right there. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to head over here into kind of the grassy area. And we're going to utilize... We can use the finger whistle or the mountain echo. Either one is fine. But we want to make sure that we lock on to the enemy in question. So we're going to lock on to this guy. There's an eavesdrop opportunity here, by the way. Well, 
So make sure you're in the grass. Lock on to him. And then we're going to get a death blow on him. So you can get this guy to follow you. Once we get over here, he's going to turn around. And you're going to be able to do a death blow to him. I want to make sure that we clear out the area of enemies first, though. So we're going to do that before we get him. Because otherwise, if we do the backstab now, there's a possibility that he could regain his health. So come in here, kill these guys. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Oh, well. Plan to do the blood, blood smoke, but that's okay. So we got Ashinasaki. We'll be using that later for um, uh, uh, Ishinashina. As well as I think Emma still needs to drink the... Uh, that kind. Anyway, I give that guy a stab. I give that guy a stab. Now, there is some cheese that you can do with this guy. You can lure him. Out into the water. And there's a couple of places here that he won't actually be able to hit you from. For example, over here. But I think he's easy enough. I'm going to go ahead and equip the Ichimanji double. He got me. Oh, I asked for that. So now we got two pair of beads. And we got all these enemies out here killed. Minus the ones that were around the item. So let's go uh, deal with that real quick.
So we got the item, we'll go ahead and head back. Got them dealt with. More upgrade materials. Other pellets. Okay, so that actually brings us to Owl. Now, I don't personally recommend fighting this fight yet. Uh, Owl is, in my personal opinion, the hardest boss of this game. Uh, the Owl Father version, anyway. And if you watched my Let's Play, you probably got to experience that. I'll say that the Demon of Hatred normally isn't that hard as, hard, as hard as it was in that playthrough. It's just I did not get the items that I really wanted to get because I was not smart in my choices. <laughs> um, and then Ishinashina usually just takes time to get down his different attacks. But this fight, I don't recommend tackling yet. That being said, though, we are sitting at almost 30 minutes, so I think we're going to wrap it here. And then from here, we're going to be headed to the Fountainhead Palace. We're going to tackle some stuff there, and then we're going to circle back to make sure that we finish up some of the last of the uh, requirements for the other endings. So we're actually going to be talking to Divine Child, for example, kind of progressing their quest as well. But until then, thank you everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Later.